Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray. Welcome back to our beginner OpenGL ES and GL kit video tutorial series. In this part of the series, we're going to cover specular lighting. Here's what the app will look like when you finish this part of the series. We've been covering the Fong lighting model, and so far we've covered two parts of it. The ambient lighting, which represents the light that's sort of bouncing around a room, hitting everything equally, and the diffuse lighting, which represents the part of the light that's brighter when it faces toward a fragment and darker when that fragment is facing away from the light. Well, there's one more part of the lighting, and that's the specular lighting. This represents, you can think of it as the shininess, where if you have a piece of metal and the light bounces just right off that metal and, and the light bounces toward your eye, it's really shiny in that one bit. So we're going to learn about that in this section. The specular color works very similarly to the diffuse color. You know, the specular color is equal to the light's color times the specular intensity times one more thing, which is the specular factor. So the only question is, what is the specular factor? Let's take a look. So this picture represents a light shining down on a spear. And there's also an eye, which is the camera, looking toward a fragment at a certain point. And that fragment has a normal facing out from that fragment. So we need one more thing, which is the direction that the light reflects off that spear about the normal. And you can get this automatically from GLSL. There's a built-in function that'll give you that. So the question is, how much does that reflected light shine toward the eye? If it points exactly toward the eye, we want it to be very bright. But as it goes away from the eye, we want it to become darker and darker. And by the way, we want that to happen fairly quickly to reinforce this specular effect. So the way we do this is yet again with our friend the dot product. So we do negative r dot i, which will give us a 1 if it's pointing exactly toward, or a 0 if it's pointing away um, or less. And we raise that to a shininess. And the shininess just means the bigger the shininess is, the faster it'll fall off. And visually, it'll have the effect of being a more condensed area, more, more of a small little shiny area, the bigger the shininess becomes. Let's take a look at what the vertex shader will look like for the specular lighting. We're going to add one more output variable here, which is the position of the fragment in camera coordinates. So to get the position into camera coordinates, we have to multiply it by the model view matrix. Now let's take a look at the fragment shader for specular lighting. We have a new parameter for the position. Remember, that's in camera coordinates. We also have two properties for the shininess. One's the specular intensity and one's the shininess. Notice that those are not in the lighting structure. This is because shininess is more of a component of the material rather than the light. Think about it. If you have light shining off a tree, that's not going to reflect very much. But if you have light shining off a piece of metal, it's going to reflect a lot. So it's not about the light, it's about the material. Next, down here in the specular section, we normalize the position. And we, do, we use the built-in function called reflect that comes with GLSL to reflect the light about the normal. Then we use the line of code you saw from the slides, where we take the negative of a dot reflection of the light, maximum of that in zero, and raise it to the power of the shininess to get that specular factor. And the specular color is just the light's color times the specular intensity times the specular factor. Finally, we add that onto the fragment color for our final shading. Okay, at this point we have ambient color, as you can see on the top of this, and we have diffuse color, since you can see that going dark and it's getting brighter over on this side. But we have one left, which is the shininess, the specular color. So let's go ahead and add that in. So up here, right now, we just have a uniform here for the texture. We're going to add in two more uniforms, one for the material specular intensity and one for the shininess. All right, scrolling down, we'll go ahead and start adding in our diffuse code here. So the first one is to get the vector from the eye to the position, since we're working in camera space here, all we have to do is normalize the position, the input variable that's passed in here. Uh, oh, um, and we have a new input variable for the frag position. And I better do that now before I forget. Moving to that to the vertex shader, I want to have a new output variable for the, for the position. We want to do pretty much the same thing we do with the normal for the position. We want to get the position into camera space coordinates and store that in the frag position. So moving back to the fragment shader, we take that position, we normalize it. Now we have the normal vector pointing in the direction toward the fragment from the eye. 
Now we get the reflection of the light. It's a built-in function in GLSL called reflect. You give it a vector, which will give the light's direction, and you give it a normal about to which reflect it, and it will return to you, obviously, the reflected vector. And we can use that to finally compute the specular factor. So again, the more the reflection in the eye are opposite, the stronger we want the light to be. But we do not want it to be any less than zero. We want to raise that by the shininess because we want it to fall off very quickly. Finally, the specular color will be similar as before. And then we'll just add in the specular color to the end of this list. Okay, great. Now we'll move back to our RWT base effect and we'll add in support for those new uniforms. And we have to add those to the end of our list here. And finally, we'll just set these to some initial values. Oh, we got a bug. Let's take a look. Oh, A position already is a vector 4, so do not need to pass that in. Oh, and this is supposed to be a vector 3. And check it out. Notice how we got this nice, shiny spot as it reflects the light into our eye. And to show you a couple things, if I switch back to the RW base effect, let's make the dot a lot more focused. Let's set it to like 128. So see how the brightness is really condensed. You can literally almost see the light reflected off there. And I can also make the shininess maybe say a little more toned down if I wanted to by reducing the specular intensity. And it's just a little uh, less that way. Um, but you can play around with these the way you want. There we go. Now we got all components of the Fong model working. We got ambient, we got diffuse, as you can see here, and we got specular. All right, that's it for this video tutorial. And finally, we have a challenge ready for you. I think you'll find this fun and educational. It's actually a fairly simple challenge. All you have to do is load up the project and put a few sliders on there that allow you to change dynamically the position of the light and the various intensities for the ambient, diffuse, and specular colors and the shininess. And that'll give you more of an intuitive understanding of how this lighting model works. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.